Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm your host, Amanda Lamb. In today's conversation with WREL's Tar Heel traveler, Scott Mason, we're talking about a topic that I think is universally loved, lighthouses. So Scott has been up and down the coast visiting these North Carolina treasures and in his Tar Heel Traveler special, tonight he will give us insight into the unique history of seven of them. He joins us with a sneak preview. Scott, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks, Amanda. Thanks for having me. So how many lighthouses are there in North Carolina and how many have you been to? Well, there are seven major lighthouses. Here, I'll list them for you in no particular order. Uh, Bald Head Island, Body Island Lighthouse, Currituck, Ocracoke, Oak Island, Cape Hatteras, and Cape Lookout. Those are considered the seven major ones. But then there are a couple others like uh, the Roanoke River Lighthouse in Edenton. And then a little known lighthouse, and this is one that I have not yet been to. I've been to all the others, but the Price's Creek Lighthouse near Southport. It's abandoned. It's sitting in the woods. Uh, a company owns the land, so it's sort of hard to get to. You need all kinds of permission, but that's a fascinating history too. That little lighthouse, Price's Creek, is only 26 feet high. Of course, oh, wow. all, all the others are enormous the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse being the tallest brick lighthouse in the world that's almost 200 feet tall. So I know in this special, you can't do all of the lighthouses, so you're focusing on the seven. But I'm sure even though they're all older and, as you said, very tall, I mean, they're all unique, correct? What what makes them so different from, from one another? Well, the color schemes, for one, make them different. For example, the Currituck Lighthouse is totally brick, and it really is a very handsome lighthouse, just the the brick and mortar. Uh, 214 stairs in it, 162 feet tall. And also with the Currituck uh, Lighthouse, there, there it's a lot of really intricate ironwork that's fascinating. The Bald Head Lighthouse is a octagonal lighthouse. It's kind of got a weird shape to it. That's 110 feet feet high. Um, And it actually traces back to Thomas Jefferson, who's the one who commissioned the first Bald Head Island lighthouse. Uh, So many, I mean, the Oak Island lighthouse is just a concrete cylinder. They didn't really have a paint scheme. The paint was actually poured into the concrete, but they didn't want to have to keep painting it, you know, after several years. Uh, And that lighthouse was built in seven days at a cost of just $110,000. Oh, my gosh. And that was in 1958, so that's one of the newer lighthouses. But you're right. Each lighthouse uh, has its own particular story. Yeah, and we'll hear more about those stories after the break. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. We are talking about the Lighthouse Special, the Tar Heel Traveler Lighthouse Special with Scott Mason. So obviously the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse has a story that a lot of people know about. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of that when we documented moving that lighthouse away from the ocean to protect it. Tell our listeners about this for someone who may not be aware of this history. Well, actually, WRAL hired me in 1997 as its documentary producer, and I did two documentaries on the moving of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. You know, there was so much controversy, you know, do we move it away from the ocean? Uh, So that was the first documentary about all the controversy. And then the second documentary was called Away from the Edge that actually documented the move. So in 1999, uh, the crew moved the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse 2,900 feet uh, away from the ocean. It took them 23 days and cost something like $12 million, I think. But it was a remarkable uh, effort, what they did, and they actually had to lift the lighthouse and then inch it down a track, uh, 2,900 feet down. That is That lighthouse is 198 and a half feet tall with 269 steps built in 1870. Yeah, I mean, that was so amazing as part of, you know, the news coverage of that to be part of that. And I guess the controversy, as I recall, was do you, do you 
it's a sacred thing, the lighthouse. So if we're moving it from this spot, are we taking away the history? But I think in the end, everybody wanted to preserve it, right? That was the goal. Well, uh, I think uh, the move has won people over uh, because it was successful. Granted, it may not have the same majesty in that the water initially, you know, was right up at its feet at the base of the lighthouse. But then again, that was the danger. Would erosion eventually harm the lighthouse? So that's why in the end they felt like the safest thing was to move it. So what are some other unique lighthouse stories that you tell in your special that touched you? Well, I mean, the Roanoke River Lighthouse in Edenton is one you don't hear an awful lot about. It's shaped like a house almost, not you know, not an, uh, a straight up and down structure, more like a house. That has actually been moved twice in its history, and right now it sits on the banks of Edenton. It's the only screw lighthouse in the state. That means that the house actually sits on a screw, and it's screwed upon the uh, upon this instrument. <laughs> wow, that's 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 unusual. Yeah, and they totally renovated the whole thing, and it's really pretty sitting out there. Uh, on the banks of Edenton. And I know there's people, I mean, people, I have friends that are lighthouse, you know, fanatics and they travel all over the United States, up and down both coasts to see the lighthouses. I'm sure people do that here in North Carolina. Oh, they do. And they always want to climb the steps and see if they can reach all the way to the top because some of those steps, it's an effort to climb. Uh, But yeah, lighthouses have such a have such an intrigue, I think, because in a way they are sort of a symbol of hope. You know, there's kind of these sentinels of the sea, and North Carolina is so fortunate to have so many. I know um, my family, I'm from the Northeast, and my kids grew up going to Cape May, New Jersey. And every year, that was the you know thing we would do together. We would climb the lighthouse, and it was really exciting to get up there and take pictures and things like that. So did you come across any ghost stories? I have to ask, because I do like ghost stories, and I figure there's got to be some, right? You know, you would think there would be ghost stories, and I'm sure there probably are, but I didn't really hear any, although I did hear one about the Ocracoke Lighthouse. Uh, how these uh, this man, he was telling me as a kid, he and his buddies broke into the Ocracoke Lighthouse after hours, and they wanted to climb to the very top. They climbed all the steps and then got to the, to the hatch, and they opened it up, and they got to the t- top where the light is, and there was a huge owl nesting up there, and oh. the owl <laughs> flapped its wings, and they ran down, and they never went in the lighthouse so again. So not a ghost, but an actual, an <laughs> an, actual an owl. An actual owl. And, and are these lighthouses still being used here in North Carolina? Oh, yes. Uh, now, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is being uh, renovated right now, so you cannot climb it. Same with the Cape Lookout Lighthouse. That one is also being renovated, so you can't actually go inside. Um, but, you know, they still attract people. I mean, just to look and snap pictures, and be- they make beautiful uh, backdrops to sunrises and sunsets. Absolutely. And they help define the beauty of of the North Carolina coast. So where and when can people watch your special? So it's this Wednesday night, August 30th at 7.30 p.m., a 30-minute special all about the beauty and the history of these North Carolina lighthouses. Thanks so much, Scott, for letting us know what we can expect tonight in your special. And thanks for listening to the WREL Daily Download. If you'd like to hear more about things to do, places to visit, and restaurants to enjoy in North Carolina, check out WREL Out and About, a weekly podcast from WREL News. Find WREL Out and About in your podcast app.